Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about my kinsman, Major Molyneux. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, this short story by Nathaniel von Hawthorne is very interesting. It can be scary, it can be funny. Um, it can certainly be kind of like a horror story for the main character, Robin. Uh, very interesting read. It says a lot about um, coming of age. It says a lot about politics uh, during the time that this piece was written. Um, and it's, it's just very, you know, kind of wacky at the same time. But, but there's a lot in here um, about the reality um, that was going on during the, during the time this piece was written. Uh, what's, what happens is, is that we get introduced to this kid, to this kid by the name of Robin. Robin is coming from the country. Uh, this is before the American Revolution within America, or you could just say the colonies. Um, and this kid by the name of Robin, he's coming from the country. Uh, he's literally coming off the boat because he takes the city to, to take him into to Boston or into Massachusetts. Um, and pretty much um, he, he meets this, this ferryman and the ferryman, he pays the ferryman, but the ferryman kind of like takes this lamp and really takes a good look at Robin. And we get a description of, of what Robin looks like. Um, you know, he's a country kid. He's probably been, you know, taken care of all his life. Uh, he's a Christian that, you know, that's, that's take, keep, you know, keep track of that. Uh, Robin is this Christian who believes in God, who has been raised by a Christian family, his siblings and, and himself, they were raised in a Christian household. So it's this kid that um, he was raised um, to have values and morals and, and, you know, he's all about success. When we're first introduced to him, we're told that he's coming in the town or he's coming to the city um, to really develop himself uh, to develop a career for himself so that he can, you know, make a living for himself. Um, and he's coming to find this, this kinsman uh, by the name of Major Molyneux. Now, Robin, you know, when we're first introduced to him, he's this rude kid. You know, he's very, um, throughout the short story, actually, throughout the, the short story, Robin is very arrogant. He's very success-driven. Um, you know, he, he goes throughout the short story and sees these different houses. If the houses are mansions and they're, you know, they're, they look like, uh, where wealthy people live, Robin is, you know, he's like, maybe my cousin lives there or maybe Major Malin lives there. But if the house is shabby or in a, you know, in a section of, of the city that looks poor or, or worn down, Robin is like, you know, th there's no way my, my kinsman could live in, in such a horrible place. So this kid, you know, he's kind of like, he has the, the air of entitlement surrounding him. Um, as soon as he gets off the this ferry, um, as you know, he's straight off the boat. So as soon as he gets off the boat, he pays the ferryman, uh, he satisfies the ferryman, he's off on, on his way. He doesn't know where his where major Molyneux is so he's literally walking through the town asking people he, he sees this rich old man this old man that seems to have some money or have some prestige he, he grabs onto the old man's clothes and he's like do you know where my kinsman major Molyneux is and he goes throughout this the whole short story um, asking people throughout the city, uh, do you know who my kinsman Major Malinu is? Do you know where I can find him? Uh, he gets a lot of attention. He gets attention, uh, attention from the barber shop when they're like cutting people's hair, and he's down in the middle of the middle of the street asking people for his kinsman. Um, and the thing is, like the thing that he doesn't know throughout the whole story, nobody's with him. Like we're not. This is not told to us while we're reading the short story. Um, everyone in the town is pretty much against him as soon as he shows up because first he's this arrogant young kid. Uh, he thinks that greater things are coming his way. If you've ever read Great Expectations, this this short story has the same feeling of it because it's it's this young kid just like in Great Expectation that that believes that the world belongs to him and that success is gonna come his way. And and if you're an adult and you're not in the, you're not in a kid anymore, you know that you know, success exists in the world, but it's not easy, right? Success is not easy. You have to work for it. You have to literally sweat for it. And Robin, he's young. He's he's literally now 
I guess, you know, he's entering adulthood. Um, this is pretty much a coming of age story. And Robin is just, he's full of hope. Uh, he's filled with prosperity uh, because he knows he's going to be something. He knows that his kinsman is going to put him in a good place in life. And that's another thing that ha that's, that's wrong with Robin is that he believes that he can just skip, you know, the first steps of success. He could just rise up um, and, and get a good position in the world because of his kinsman. Um, and it's not like that. That's not what happens at the end of the short story. So Robin goes throughout the city, goes throughout the town. Um, it is nine o'clock. So keep keep that in mind. It's late at night. Um, at the beginning of the short story, it's it's, it's nine o'clock. And then as he's you know walking more and going around more, um, as you can imagine, you know it's getting deeper, deeper into the night. So you know he's disrupting people. He goes into bars. Um, he meets, you know, he meets different people here and there. Um, one of the, the individuals he meets looks like pretty much the devil. Um, a lot of people have their face painted. There's this one guy he meets that has a face that's half red, half black. Um, and it's, you know, this like, it's kind of like a devilish figure that, that he, um, cross paths with, um, a lot, um, throughout this short story which has um, a lot to do with the end of the short story. So this devil figure is very significant. He also um, comes across this, this woman in, in scarlet, this woman in, in red that, that pretty much, you know, tried to seduce him for, you know, prostitution because um, at the time prostitution was illegal in the colonies, but at the same time, um, you know, it was being done. So he, he was tempted within this short story. So all of that takes place. Robin is going out through the streets. He's meeting all these types of people. Um, he's socializing with them and he's arrogant and things like we can hear his thoughts. We can hear what he's thinking. Um, and in his mind, he's thinking that, you know, people are lining up to help him when he goes into bars to ask questions or when he goes into different establishments, he's walking on the street, he's asking old people, young people, anybody that, that seems to be of significance, um, policemen, you know, he's asking everybody for his kinsman, Major Malinu, and he's not like, he's not subtle about it. He's not gentle about it. He's not polite about it. He's, you know, he's, you know, he's just in people's faces. Um, like bring, if I bring it back to that old man I was talking about, he literally just grabs this old man's, um, clothes and he's like, where is my kinsman? Like, you know, do you know where I can find my kinsman, Major Malinu? And that's just not how you do things. So <laughs> Robin is just, he's just asking for trouble. There's several places where, uh, the watchman tries to throw, throw him in jail. People threaten him. Um, different individuals threaten him. He only meets, um, one man by by closer to the end of the short story this gentleman that's kind of like wise that that you know offers him you know some company uh he ends up like sitting in front of this church he meets the de the devil ish character again and the devil ish character tells him to like stand in front of this church and to pretty much wait for his kinsman and that's what he does he stands in front of this church and he waits for his kinsman so, um, you know, he's waiting for his kinsman in front of this church. Um, he does try to explore his surroundings. I mean, there's, there's parts where he likes, looks at the city. Uh, he looks at, he thinks about the good parts, the bad parts. Uh, but he only really focuses on the rich parts because he's like, that's where my kinsman is going to be. Uh, that's where Major Malanu is. Cause he's thinking of Major Malanu as a, as a, you know, as a person of power, and Major Malanu is a person of power. I'll, I'll speak more to that um, in in a minute. Um, so, near the end of the of the short story, um, he's sitting in front of this church because the devilish character to tells him that if you stand in front of the church for for about uh, you know just stand here or sit here, just wait here, your kinsman is going to, to pass right in front of you. And so the devilish character, when he encounters him um, closer to the end of the story, that's what happens. He stands in front of this church. He listens to the, he listens to this devilish character. He meets this kind old gentleman. They have a conversation. The, the gentleman asks him about him himself, uh, his life, what he's planning, you know, to do with himself. Um, and they, they they're you know, it's they have they they have a conversation, and everything is. I guess you could say going well. Uh, before that even happened, he actually looks into the church and he, he sees um, how the moonlight um, pretty much 
um, goes, you know, touches the pews and then touches this open Bible and he reflects on on how, you know, wonderful and, um, you know, amazing that is in, in amazing that is in religious terms. Um, and, you know, he's hungry. So this kid is just he's all alone. He pretty much, he has no money. He only has like a few pence and a few pennies left in his wallet, I guess. And he's hungry. It's it's the middle of the night. He's asking everyone for Major Malanu. They all hate him. He he almost got seduced. This devilish character doesn't like him. And um, you know everything is just it's everything's not going his way. Nothing is going his way. And eventually, what happens is. All of the people that were antagonizing him, all of the people that were against him, uh, they all come in this massive parade. And his kinsman, Major Malanu, is tart and feathered. And his kinsman, Major Malanu, uh, is, you know, shamed and, and they, you know, he's lost all of his stature. He's lost all of his prestige. And they, you know, the crowd pretty much brings his kinsman, Major Malanu, to him in front of this church. Um, and Robin sees Major Malanu. Major Malanu sees Robin. They look into each other's eyes. They both feel shame. Robin ends up laughing with the crowd. And Major Malanu is, is disgraced. He's, you know, he's not a person that can help Robin because, you know, he's been demoted from his position. Um, he he has no power to help Robin become something successful. So this kid who was you know um, you know arrogant, uh, he was looking for greater things. Uh, he felt like he was going to be something great in the world. Uh, he's planning to go up and up and upward mobility, and he's putting all of this on his kinsman Major Malanu, and his kinsman Major Malanu is disgraced his kinsman major malanu can't do anything for him and he's discouraged and he's he's defeated because everyone was against him no one was ever really trying to help him because they hated it they hated his kinsman they hated major malanu and the reason why they hated major malanu was because major malanu was a horrible leader um, um the reason why this this work is so political is because when you're thinking about america um before the 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 Revolutionary War, um, you know, America had a lot of these like these leaders and governors that were in charge of the colonies, and they answered to Great Britain, they answered to England, and you know it was tough work because England or Great Britain was trying to um, keep control of the colonies, um, you know, across the ocean. It's it's a hard work to do. They wanted money. They wanted resources to keep coming. The governors tried to enforce the laws in the, col in, in the colonies, and it didn't work that well. It didn't work that well. And, and the governors uh, who went against the people or, or when the people felt like they were being mistreated or, um, you know, things weren't going their way or things weren't um, you know, being done fairly, they, you know, revolted and they tarred and feathered their governors. Some, you know, sometimes they killed them. Sometimes the governors just, just died of stress and, or they just killed themselves. Um, it was not easy work because it was literally Great Britain versus, um, baby America, basically. Um, and, and it was not pretty. Um, so, the story ends with Robin asking this gentleman that became his friend to, to bring him back uh, to the ferryman so he can go back to the country, go back to his family. Because throughout the short story, you kind of see him wanting to go back, uh, but he didn't, you know, he he wanted to find his kinsman. He wanted to see if his kinsman could make him into something because he didn't have uh, a future. Uh, but the gentleman tells him, well, you're in the city, stay a couple of days see if you can make it on your own out here and if you can't make it on your own in the city in this you know in, the, in this you know vibrant um city and you can't find yourself a job and make your own fortune then i'll take you back uh to the ferry and you know you can go on your way so the, the short story ends in a in a, a, a not a great place i mean robin definitely learns his lesson uh, he definitely understands what it means to be an adult now, because uh, he, he comes into town with the mindset of a kid, you know, 
Um, if, if you're an adult, if you've you know, lived in the world, you know that um, hope and, and wishing for something alone, uh, alone is not going to get it done. Robin you know, wanted to, to, to have success, wanted upward mobility. He put it all in his kinsman, Major Malanu. We're not told if he had any skills. Uh, we're not told if he had any, any formal education. Uh, we're, we're not told any of that. We just know he's a, he's a good Christian. Uh, his family sent him to the city uh, to start building a life for himself. Um, and, you know, he disrespected every single sad house um, and, and looked down upon them. Uh, he looked down on, down on people who he felt like weren't rich enough or weren't prestigious enough. Um, and he was like, you know, I'm, I'm, a, you know, I'm coming from a great family because my kinsman Major Mal knew he has the resources, he has the power to make me something greater, to make me something better. Um, and so that's what that's what I'm going to be. I mean, he goes into bars, he goes into public places. Um, he's not, res he doesn't show anybody respect. Um, you know, no matter who a person is. No matter who you are, you have to show people respect, no matter what their status is in life. But Robin, he's just this young kid who knows nothing about the world. He's not even dressed properly or dressed uh, as someone that, you know, they would respect. He's even, there's actually, there's, there's part of the short story where they um, almost thought he was this runaway servant because he was wearing the clothes that matched the description of what a runaway servant uh, would wear. So, you know, Robin did not re represent himself in a good way at all. Um, in terms of analysis, in terms of deeper meaning, um, you know, it's 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 uh, first thing to recognize is just it's a coming of age story. It's this kid realizing where he stands in the world or and how the world works. Um, you don't just come straight off the boat and expecting the world to just throw all of its riches in your hands. Um, you know, Robin was expecting. I mean, he would just get off the boat, get off the ferry, and just walk down the street, and then and then there would be this massive mansion that he would walk into, and his kinsman Major Malanu would just would just throw jobs at him, uh, throw um, everything that he needed in life at him. It, you know, life doesn't work that way. Um, you know, it ends horribly for him because his, his kinsman Major Malanu is a disgrace. He's tarred and feathered. He's deposed. He has no more power, um, and so. You know his great hope, his great wish, um, you know, has been has been destroyed. Uh, so Robin learns a lesson, and now we know if he chooses to stay within the city, if he chooses to stay in town, um, he's gonna have to work hard and make his own living and make it in the world in, in the world on his own, uh, because that's what the gentleman says. The gentleman says, if you want to stay here and, and work hard and make it on your own, you can. It's a free world. Um, that's what you can do. And we're not told if he chooses to stay or to go. Um, it's just the, 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 the ball is in his court now. He, he has to make decisions for himself. Uh, he doesn't have any money. He doesn't have anywhere to sleep or stay. I don't know if the gentleman is going to give him a place to sleep or stay. That's not stated within the short story. But, you know, his life is in his hands. He has to make decisions now. Um, you know, tart and feathered, that's another thing that, you know, with the de the devilish character that kept on popping up, um, and the Tartan Tar was was, um, you know, it was stated throughout several points within the short story. Um, Robin smelled tar. Uh, Robin, you know, he smelled tar in the air. There was a line like that within the short story. So the line was kind of the, the the whole short story was kind of foreshadowing that something was going to happen that wasn't going to be. Um, well received by Robin, the devilish character. I mean, it just it just didn't look um, like it was going to to end in a good note. I mean, this is this is a kid coming to town in the dead of night. Everything is. I mean, there's parts of the town where Robin goes into where it's it's dark and scary and and, and dreary. Um, you know, there's there's this devilish character. There's policemen threatening him. There's this prostitute trying to sleep with him. Uh, he's, you know, everybody is, you know, angry or, or, um, they, they're not treating him well. Uh, I mean, everything that was happening to Rob, it, it, nothing, none of it sound, uh, seemed like, or felt like it was going to end in a good place for him. Um, you know, the deeper the short story went, the darker it got and, and the more, and the more, um, unwelcoming it got. Even when he like sat in front of this church, 
it was a cemetery connected to the church and i mean he was between good and evil uh because like i mean on one hand you got god and religion and goodness and righteousness on the other hand you have a cemetery right next to you in the dead and there's a devil that's passing in front of it and there's a gentleman so there's like these good things and bad things constantly fighting and constantly impairing themselves um, I mean, you can see pride and greed and lust. I mean, so, you know, deadly sins, right? Because you have the prostitute, you have the devil, you have the old man who's all prideful and all about his, you know, his wisdom and, and you know, himself. Um, it's just, it's all there and it's all amalgamating. And, and Robin, this youth that is supposed to be kind of like trying to figure out where he's going to plant his feet in the world he all he has to like kind of figure all of this out himself and that literally everyone that's young you pretty much have to go through that at some point in your, of your life because he literally comes into to the city a clean slate this good christian boy and he on in one night he encounters the devil basically and and, and lust and prostitution and and the the hunt for wealth and power and money and friendship and all of that is kind of like just thrown at this kid all at once and his arrogance and ego doesn't help him at all um and you know there's not much to say about his kinsman major mile new just that according to to the time that this was written um you can see that he was a governor uh, or a person of power that just didn't lead well and the people were against him and the whole town just pretty much a lot of people just decided to tar and feather him. Now, tar and feathering, when you tar and feather someone, it's pretty much a, a disgrace and shame, and um, they're deposing you. They don't want you as a leader. It's not something that's going to kill you. It's more of something that's going to embarrass you and take take your power and your prestige away from you. Um, so that, that's, that's, that says a lot right there. Um, so the, the short story doesn't really give us a happy ending. It just ends in a place where anything can happen robin could go back home robin could stay in the city robin could fall into sin because i mean prostitution exists um you know all types of things go on at night uh he could get hungry with power um his life is literally in his hand at the end of uh, at the end of this work and and he could stay a good Christian boy or he could just fall into sin because it's all literally thrown into his face. And I mean, he doesn't have re really that, that support of Christianity that he had at home in the country with his family. You know, he dreams about it a lot throughout the short story about going back and about being with his family. That Christian foundation and, and support, it's not with him in the city. Um, so that could alter his choices because he, he doesn't have that reservoir of, of support in the city. So, I mean, it's up to his, his up, you know, like the way his parents raised him um, to say what's going to happen to him. Because Nathaniel Avon doesn't tell us what's going to happen to Robin. It's just that he can't rely on, on his kinsman, Major Malinu. Uh He doesn't have a place to stay. He doesn't have money. But this gentleman says... Stay a while and see what you can do with yourself and um, figure out what life is about. And life is, is pretty much a bunch of unknowable, unknowables. You just got to swim in, in this ocean of life and figure out what you become of it, you know, what you can make of it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my summer analysis of the short story by Nathaniel Hawthorne. Really interesting. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe and or comment. And I'll see you guys in my next video.